Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 12 of my tutorial on how to make Android apps. Today, I'm going to focus in actually on a Google example, except based off of a lot of questions I've gotten on it. I am going to change a lot of the code to make it work the way you guys seem to want it to work. And more specifically, we're going to focus in on replacing fragments or creating new activities based off of screen orientation and a whole bunch of other different things. Okay, so this is going to be our application. We're going to have a list view over here, and it's going to have a bunch of superhero names. And whenever one of these is clicked on, if we're in portrait mode, it is going to show some information on said superhero. Now, of course, we're going to have two layouts, and we can go and look at the horizontal one. In this situation, in which we have the horizontal one, we're going to have the names and the information on the screen at the same time, while whenever we're in portrait mode, we're going to switch back and forth. In this situation, what we're going to be doing is whenever we click on one of these names, we're going to open up a new activity and display it instead of showing the list view. And in this situation, we're actually going to have a frame layout over here, and each time we click on one of these, we're going to put a different fragment inside of it. And so I have a lot to do, so let's start writing some code. Okay, and I'm going to call this guy Fragment Layouts and click on next and let all this be the same click on next have a blank activity click on next the main activities name in this situation is going to be fragment layout and the layout name is going to be fragment layout and we can leave everything else be the same and click finish okay so we have everything running here very first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to have the superhero data stored inside of an outside class so i'm going to come in here click on this new java class and I'm going to call this Superhero Info, and then click on OK, and there it is. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to paste in all of my superhero information so you don't have to watch me type it all in. And just like the Google-provided example, what we're going to do in this situation is we're going to have two arrays. One of them is going to be called Names, and it's going to have the superheroes. And then in the other one, it's going to be called History, and you're going to have History on all the superheroes. And what we're going to be able to do is we're going to tie the names into our list view so that we have our list of superheroes. And each time one of those is clicked on, it's going to have an index, of course, because it's an array, and we're going to match up those indexes with this history index or string right here. Okay, so that's all we're going to do for that. So just save that and get rid of it. Now what we're going to do is come over into Fragment Layout. This is the main class for our activity or for our application, and you can see everything that we have right there. This is going to be very simple to set up. What we're going to do is just get rid of the menus right here, and there they go. And there we are. And this fragment layout that you see on your screen right here, this layout right here, is going to represent the fragment or the layout that we're going to use whenever we are in portrait mode. Now, if we want to have a separate fragment layout whenever we are in landscape mode, we're going to have to come in here. I've done this before. Go into the Resources folder, New, and Directory. Now, if you want to have a landscape-specific one, we're just going to go Layout dash land there that is click OK and we're also at the same time going to open up our portrait fragment layout and there that is so first what we're going to do is change a couple things here for the fragment layout that we're going to use when we're in portrait mode and of course if we want to figure out which one just put our mouse over top of this and it's going to show that it's the regular layout so let's come up here and do that again you can see it says layout okay so this is the portrait one what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to change this into a frame layout. And frame layouts are basically going to be used to block out part of the screen to display normally just a single object on our screen. So I can get rid of all this extraneous other information. Just come in here and delete all that. And of course come down here and change this to frame layout as well. And then inside of here we're going to be using a fragment. We're not going to be using a text view. So let's come in here and just type in fragment. And for our width we're going to have this be match parent and then we're going to have match parent for this as well. And then the the final thing we're going to do here is of course give it an ID so ID there it is and we're gonna call this titles close that off and there we go another thing we're gonna to want to do for this is come in and define a class is equal to and this is going to be called titles fragment it's gonna give me an error right now I'm gonna create it here in a little bit so new think tank that's gonna be different for you of course and name unless you're typing in my name and then fragment layouts and then title fragment is going to be the final little part. And ignore this. There's always going to be rendering problems unless something's perfect. So just ignore that. Whenever you're typing in stuff, you're going to get errors all the time. So just get rid of that. So don't worry about it. And we're going to save that and then jump over into the layout land folder. And this is going to be called fragment layout as well. So I'll go file and fragment layout. 
and then this is just going to be specific to whenever we're in horizontal mode. And this is going to give me a whole bunch of errors because there's nothing in there right now. I'm going to jump over into our regular portrait mode, fragment layout. There it is. And I'll just select all this, jump back over into the landscape version, and I'm going to go and paste that in there. Just save me a little bit of time. In this situation, we're going to use a linear layout. So let's change this to linear layout. Let's move this off the screen here. Not going to have a reference to a class. Everything else there can stay the same. And in this situation, we're going to be displaying both the titles and the details as well. So this fragment is actually going to stay here. And we, of course, it's going to be title fragment. Well, let's change this to titles fragment. Uh, come back over and make sure this is the same. Titles fragment. Keep my naming conventions the same. Don't worry about that. And then I'm also, one of the reasons we're using the linear layouts is because we're going to want to be able to divide everything up on the screen using weight. That way it'll work great on any type of different display. So that's the reason why I chose to use linear layout here. And I'm going to be putting everything in a frame layout. Once again, frame layouts are used a lot whenever you want to block off part of the screen to display a singular type of thing, which is going to be actually a scroll view, and inside of that scroll view is going to be a text view, and that's how we're going to have everything divided up. Now whenever you do that, you're going to come in here and type in 0dp whenever you're working with weight in regards to shifting things on the screen in, on a horizontal plane, and then the height is actually going to be match parent. Another thing I want to do here, and this is purely just based off of the way that the Android example worked itself out, we're going to put a background inside of this. And in that situation, we're going to use Android, ATTR, Details, Element Background. And this is just a background that is used whenever we want to provide details about the data that the user has selected. If that looks confusing, don't worry about that. And then we're also going to change the width on this fragment to 0dp. And then we're going to add weights to all of these. So layout weight. And in this situation, I'm going to make that one. So I want one fourth of the screen is going to be taken up with that. I can get rid of this frame layout right here. And if I want the screen taken up or divided based off of a percentage being one fourth in this situation or three fourths, layout weight, and I'm going to give this three. So this frame layout is going to take up three fourths of the screen. This is going to take up one fourth. Add those together equals four. That's exactly how weights work covered that a little bit in the past. And the only other thing I need to do is this frame layout, I'm going to give it an ID, so I'll be able to reference it, which I will be referencing it a lot, and it's going to have the name details. That's going to have the details for my superhero. And that's all I need to do that, so save it. Then the final thing I'm going to do here, and I'm going to finish up the rest of the application in the next tutorials, I'm going to come over here and create a new class, and this class is going to be the titles fragment that we just keep talking about here over and over again. Titles, fragment, click OK, and there it is. Now the titles fragment is going to be a list view. So I'm going to say extends list fragment. And once again, this is just going to show the title fragment, which is a list view. And whenever the list view items are going to be selected, we will, in this situation, put the details fragment in the frame layout if we are in horizontal mode, or we will create a details activity and switch to it if we are in portrait mode. So a couple different things I want to have here. Of course, I'm going to have to monitor whether I am in portrait mode or horizontal mode. So create a Boolean in this situation. And this is going to be called dual pane int. I normally write all of this code on my own, but I've just received so many questions about this specific example because it's a little bit, it doesn't do what people want. Another thing I'm going to have to check here and monitor is the currently selected item in our list view. Then I'm going to generate a couple different methods inside here. Just click on generate and override methods. Inside the fragment class, I'm going to look specifically for on activity created. On activity created right there. And there it is. And this time we're going to be working with bundles because we are going to want to store the currently selected superhero or title or whatever you want to refer to it in the list view activity and bundles are going to save key valued pairs and you're going to see more of them right now inside of this class actually. So everything here is going to stay the same. One thing I'm going to have to do however if I want to bind the list view with the data is create an array adapter because all our information is inside of an array and we want to have everything go inside of the list view. So let's create an array adapter. And what type of data do we have? We have strings. And I'm going to call this connect array to list view is equal to new. Let's go down to the next line here. And I'm going to create an array adapter. And 
and to this I am going to need to pass a context so that we'll have the resources that we need and to do that I'm gonna go get activity and then I'm gonna to have to provide a default list view item text view to put our data inside of it we've actually used this in the past as well or layout simple list and you'll use this all of the time as like a junk dumping spot I'm going to use this one right here for activated, except I'm going to change this to one. It's a problem with viewing everything really large text-wise. I get kind of a weird type of thing to have to deal with. And then, of course, I'm going to provide the data or the array that I want to specifically use for my array adapter. And that's going to be the names one because we're working with the list view. There we go. Now, if we want to connect our list view to our data, well, we just say that we want to set our list adapter. There it is. And what is it called? It is called Connect Array to List View. There it is. All the codes provided in the description of this video, of course. Then we want to check if the frame layout with the ID details actually exists. Details, meaning the actual frame layout name details. This guy up here, is this the right one? No, that's not it. This one right here, see? Details, frame layout. So to do that, we're going to go View, Details Frame, and we're going to say Get Activity. And then we're going to do a Find View by ID, and specifically pass it r.id.details. There it is. Now we're going to set the value for dual pane based off of whether we are currently in horizontal layout mode or if we are in portrait mode. So to do that, we're going to just come in here and go Details Frame, check if it's not equal to null, and Details Frame, check its visibility. And check, let's just go on to the next line here, if it's equal to visible. So now we'll know and we'll have that stored. We're going to check that multiple times. Another thing we're going to use a lot is a method called saved instance state. And what that's going to do for us is anytime the screen is rotated or Android forces an activity to be closed for some reason, those key valued pairs that I talked about before, which is just going to be the last selected hero, are going to be stored. So what we want to do inside of here is come in and store the hero that was most recently selected. And we're going to store that in this guy right here, that guy. Might as well copy it because we're going to be using it in a second. So we're going to say if saved instance state is not equal to null, we want to store the last state for our check position. So whatever superhero name was recently clicked on. And to do that, we're just going to go saved instance state and get int. And the key for this is going to be cursor choice. And then we'll just put zero inside of there. Now what we can do, since we found the superhero that was recently selected, is we can say if we are currently in dual pane mode or horizontal mode, we want to get the list view and highlight the correct superhero that was most recently selected. And specifically here, I'm going to say that I want to use choice mode single, which is going to allow one item in the list view to be selected at a time, which makes a lot of sense. Choice mode single, and there it is. And the other options is choice mode multiple, which is, of course, going to allow you to have multiple different things selected, which doesn't make any sense in this situation. And choice mode none, which is actually the default. And in those situations, nothing will be highlighted at all. And then we're going to call show details which is going to be a method we're going to create here in a second. And what we're going to pass to it is the current index for the most recently checked hero so that it will be able to also go in and get the correct superhero data history, which is from this guy. Remember, we have names here and we have history here. So all we have to do is pass the proper index and it's going to put the proper information in the details section. And we're going to create this in a second. So now we're going to handle creating on saved instance state. So just right click inside of here and generate and override methods. And inside of the fragment class, if we come down here, we're going to find it and it's right there. There it is. And in here, we're just going to say we want to put our int inside of here. And like I said, this on saved instance state right here is going to be called by Android automatically for you anytime the screen orientation changes or anytime Android has to force close an activity to conserve resources. So this is a great way to be able to save information. And what did we use before? Cur choice, cursor choice, that's this guy right here. See, same thing, same key name. And in this situation, we're gonna get the currently most recently selected superhero and save it into that. So that's gonna be where the indexes are saved. And that's all we need to do with that. 
Another thing we're going to need to do is change the hero history data every time a list item is clicked on in our list view. Just right click and generate and override methods. And of course, this is in the list fragment part on list item click. Just click on that. And then once again, we're going to do pretty much the same thing. We can just get rid of this because this doesn't need to be called at all. And we're going to call show details, which is going to handle updating the details data on our superhero every time one of these list items is picked. And that brings us to actually creating show details and actually covering what it's going to do. It's just going to show our hero data, show details, there it is. And what's it going to get passed? Well, it's going to be passed an integer, which is going to be an index. It's going to represent the most recently clicked on list view item. And that is going to provide a reference to the proper hero data that we want to display on our screen. So once again, we're going to update this guy to the index that was passed to it. We're going to again check if we're in horizontal mode again. That's just going to be true or false, of course. We're going to come in here and set the proper item that was recently checked. So set the list view, set item checked, which is going to be exactly the same as the index what was passed in here. So we're going to say index, and then also true. It's just going to highlight that. And now because we are in horizontal mode, let's go make sure I'm in the right one. Yep, this one right here. If we're in horizontal mode, which we would be if that came back, if, well, let's go over and look at this again. If this comes back as true, that means we're in horizontal mode. So in that situation, what we're going to want to do is go into the frame layout and put our details data inside of that. So jump back over here. So we're going to create a details fragment, which we're actually going to create this class in the next part of the tutorial. And I'm just going to call it details. And it's going to be a details fragment. And we're going to say get fragment manager. And this is going to give you errors. And if you type this in without all the other code, it's going to give you errors as well. And I'm going to say find fragment by ID. And we're going to create this later. R.ID. Well, in this situation, details actually does exist, but details fragment doesn't exist. And then we can come in here and go if details equals null or details get show index, which doesn't exist, is not equal to index. What we're going to do here is whenever the details fragment is actually created, the index for the data it is supposed to show on the screen is going to be passed to it. So if that index hasn't been assigned, what we're going to have to do is assign it inside of this if block. So first I'm going to have to go in and make the details fragment and give it the current selected hero index. Details fragment, we're going to call new instance and pass in the index right here. That's going to get the proper details data for the specific superhero we want to show on the screen. And then we're going to call fragment transaction because we want to perform different transactions with our fragments. T is equal to, we're going to need our fragment manager of course. Get fragment manager and then say begin transaction. And then the specific transaction we want to do is a replace which is going to replace any other fragment with our current proper details fragment with the right data we want to show on our screen. R ID details. Once again, this is going to happen whenever we are in horizontal mode. And then we can go set transition, fragment transaction, and let's say that we want to do a nice fade inside of this. There that is. And then if we don't want to do anything else, we can just say commit this whenever possible, which will be very quickly. All right, so what do we do in the situation in which we are in portrait mode? Well, in that situation, we're going to have to create a details activity and then take the whole entire screen up with that activity. So to do that, we're going to cover intents more here very, very soon. We're going to create an intent, and our intent in this situation is to launch a new activity to show our details fragment on a screen. We're going to go new, intent, there that is. And then, of course, we need to define the class, the activity that we're going to be calling. So set class. Get activity is going to provide us with our resources we're going to need so that we know what has happened prior to us calling this. And this is going to call the details activity, which we're going to create here in a second or actually what we're going to create in the next part of the tutorial, which will be up very, very soon. I just wanted to break this apart so this wasn't so completely overwhelming. And then, of course, we're going to want to pass along the indexes that we're going to be selecting on our screen in this situation. Otherwise, it's not going to be able to properly display the right hero data inside of the details activity we're going to be creating. And we're going to pass the index in that situation. And then we just call for our activity to open up on our screen by passing. 
passing the intent. Okay guys, so once again, this code is not complete. It's not totally gonna be working, but in the next part of the tutorial, which will be up very soon, I'm gonna completely finish everything here and you'll have your little superhero type activity and we'll have learned a lot about working with fragments. Please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.